Okay, it's day 20, and as you can see, the soil is all wet, and that's because I took a cup, you know, about this size, it wasn't even that big, and I wanted to make a dilute solution of Lysol to pour on a seedling over here, which had grown some mold. So what ended up happening was I poured way too much, you know, I didn't even have a spray bottle, but I figure, you know, since I've already soaked that entire hemisphere of soil with Lysol water, why not do it for the rest? and as it turns out I don't see any ill side effects it was a very dilute solution and in fact some of these seedlings are coming along quite nicely perhaps due to that you know flooding of water so I think that's probably what's required of this to make seeds germinate better instead of just relying on a spray bottle and spraying many 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 times sometimes you just need a larger volume of water actually I just noticed that the seedling, which is the one I poured the water over initially yesterday with a minute dilution of Lysol in it, it's growing more mold. So apparently that tiny dilution of Lysol didn't do anything. And this seedling might germinate fine, but I don't want all of the soil to just mold over. Things can get nasty pretty quickly if I let this go unchecked. So I'm just going to spray some Lysol on that. Okay, so I just sprayed it with some Lysol, and hopefully that doesn't kill the seedling. I doubt it will, though. I mean, isopropanol is one matter at 70%, but, you know, I think this only contains 1% isopropanol or 2%, and the rest is a bunch of antimicrobial compounds. Okay, so this is just uh, lemon-scented Lysol. It's supposed to kill germs, cut grease, and deodorize, but... Anyway, I'm just in this for the germ killing. It has a few complicated active ingredients that should serve as uh, antimicrobial compounds and they'll basically just sit there on the seedling where I just sprayed it and in the soil in that area. And if I water it, those chemicals will transfer, uh, they'll diffuse downwards into the soil. In fact, they'll slowly diffuse over the wet soil anyway, as is so I'm hoping this will solve the problem and if it works well and the seedling isn't adversely affected I'll use it in the future. Here's another seedling that's just beginning to germinate and I can see some mold filaments so I'm gonna spray that too. Okay so now we're gonna go back to the meat and potatoes of this documentary. So here's plant number one and it still has that threadbare connection that shriveled from the isopropanol sprayings previously. If we look over here you know, the development seems to be fine. Um, the true leaf is getting bigger and bigger. And I think a second true leaf is going to be growing soon. It's uh, starting to appear at the shoot apical meristem. So I think this plant will recover and do fine. And likewise, this other plant that originates in the same general vicinity in the center, it's developing well too. Um, the cotyledons are still bound up, but the true leaf is coming along nicely. So I'm not going to go into all the details from now on, but as you can see from this uh, exemplary plant, the first true leaf is developing quite nicely, and it's spade-shaped. And if you focus in the center here, you can see a second true leaf developing from the shoot apical meristem. So this plant is developing very nicely. You know, it's a little crooked because of the isopropanol spraying, and that affected, you know, the stem root connection a bit but it's still mostly more upright than some of the other plants and you know at some point this was gonna fall down and become a vine anyway so I don't think it'll make much difference alright it's day 21 and as you can see there is more growth and I noticed mold in some spots but this is not one of them because I sprayed some Lysol on it yesterday likewise with this seed I sprayed some Lysol yesterday as well so there's no mold so what I'm going to do today is spray this seed to get rid of the mold that you see uh, at the pointy tip. So this plant has the most prominent growth every day. And as you can see, the first true leaf is getting much larger. It's fully visible right now, and you can see all the intricate vein patterns, uh, which we'll study when the leaf is bigger. But the cotyledons are still doing the majority of the photosynthesis. However, the true leaf is not as yellow as it was before. It was sort of yellowish green at first, so... It's becoming a light green and I expect it to become just as dark as the cotyledons in the future. So 
So as you can see in the bottom center, there's a second true leaf developing. As for these other plants, you know, I don't really want to touch them because I'm afraid of breaking the plants off at of the root and the stem juncture. So um, that one has a true leaf developing. You know, this one has a true leaf developing nicely. And this one has a true leaf if you were to look from this angle. So this seedling is doing quite well too. Um, the cotyledon on the right is somewhat inhibited and folded back, but the other cotyledon is doing fine on the left. So as far as I can tell, you know, this plant will develop a lot faster than the other ones. It really makes a world of difference when the cotyledons are unfolded like this. Notice how big they are compared to, um, say if I were to focus over here, you know, this one's just been stuck in this, uh, stay for a really long time because the photosynthesis can't occur efficiently with all the light hitting the back of one cotyledon and everything else you know the second cotyledon and the true leaf in between um, they're not really getting that much light so that really inhibits the growth development of this plant it's day 22 so as you can see there's a lot more growth in this true leaf of uh, the most successful plant and you can see a second true leaf popping up you know, the shoot apical meristem. So the growth is uh, pretty robust these days. You know, these stems are getting thicker. And this plant is doing pretty well as well. Um, it's got nice cotyledons. This one's kind of folded under the stem of the most successful one. And there's another seedling here. It's, it's just trapped in seed and uh, dirt. But, you know, a quick scan around. Um, so here we can see two seedlings that are doing well but still have yet to burst out of their seeds with their cotyledons, um, but they're growing upright and they're growing fast. Um, so that means they've got plenty of energy reserves. Um, this plant, you know, this long one isn't doing too well, um, but it still looks like it's alive. The stem doesn't look too compromised. This one is trapped in its seed, it's trapped under this plant, but it's got cotyledons exposed to the light, so it's, it'll do well. And, I'll get a close up of this one, but it seems to have a lot of trouble. You know, the whole, you know, cotyledon and seed complex is just stuck to the soil. So if you follow this plant, this was one of the ones that was about to droop and fall over. Um, it's not doing too bad. You know, the stem is a lot more upright than it used to be. So, and there's a true leaf developing uh, right here. There's a lot of glare. Try turning this off. Yeah, so you can see it like that, but um, anyway, that will start growing upwards and the development will accelerate and I hope this stem can curve back and straighten itself up. So here's another example of a plant that has the same problem, but I see a little bit of mold development. I'll try another spraying of Lysol. This seed has some mold growing on it as well, so um, at first I thought maybe those are just those fuzzy hairs on the side of the stems and leaves sticking out, but... I'm pretty sure that's not the case. And here's a case of uh, where I poured a lot of water. The soil sort of deformed and caved in. But you can see uh, a lot of mold filaments. So I'm going to spray that too with some Lysol. Um, so the problem is uh, I didn't pack this soil very tightly. And maybe that led to a lot of these um, seedlings not having uh, structural support and standing up straight. But, you know, I think most of the falling over was actually due to the isopropanol springs. And then there's this plant. So it has a double seed husk. I uh, never got around to investigating the inside of that to check for another plant because it's never fallen off. But that one cotyledon has grown quite big. And uh, the other one is small. There's a true leaf or two coming out in the middle. So this is the one that's kind of got a very compromised... Uh, you know, threadbare stem root attachment due to the isopropanol spraying. So I think this plant will survive. It's just taking a long time to recover. So far there are 12 seedlings that are easily visible, but here's another one that's germinating. And here's another one that's germinating. So that brings the total to 14 out of 47 possible seedlings or 50 original seeds.